So you want to play a spirit build, but everything you look up talks about Warrior of the East. And you don't want to be a thick boy. When you think of spear, you're thinking Dynasty Warriors. You're thinking dashing all over the battlefield like Machao, flipping over somebody, stabbing one dude, twirling around, hitting the next guy. And if that's the case, you're in luck. Because today I'd like to introduce to you the God of Thrust build. As you can probably guess from the title, this build focuses around thrust damage, and in particular, thrust damage, high mobility, and range support to take out those smaller annoying enemies. We're going to be taking advantage of the seven-piece Master of Spear set, which essentially gives us a free tiger running scroll every time we kill something. We have a boost to a unique skill, attack and defense up with the spear, a thrust damage increase, and active skill key consumption reduction. We're also going to pick up three pieces from the Hunter of Tiger sets to get a boost to Piercing Rain. On our gauntlets, we are going to roll a 10% boost to Twisting Spear damage, and all of this thrust damage also boosts the damage on our kunais and shurikens. So essentially, we are dashing all over the place, messing up people, little guys show up, we toss a quick kunai out, go back to messing up the main guy, and you have a build that has a very high skill ceiling, but is also incredibly satisfying and rewarding to play. Now, before we do a deep dive into what I would suggest getting on the gear, let's talk about farming, because after all, we need six different pieces of this set, and one of them is actually unique in the sense that it's an accessory and pretty hard to farm. I also want to point out that to run this set at its maximum effectiveness, you absolutely need to have a Yasukani Magatama. Now, you get this randomly in New Game Plus. When you beat the final boss in New Game Plus, it is a guaranteed drop. However, there are ways that you can farm this, and it's also the same way that we're going to farm up a high-level Toshi's Abacus. We're going to talk about that in a little, but for now, let's talk about getting the Hunter of Tiger set and the Master of Spear set. Now, you can get both of these very easily in the sixth region of the game. So this is very much a end game, new game plus oriented build. If you're still early game, you know what? I know I just dunked on it, but just go ahead and run Warrior of the East. It's, it's a safe, low game friendly set, but when it gets to late game, that's when you can have some fun and pull out something badass like this. Anyway, moving on, Mataza of the Spear. This is a sub quest you get in region six. It's a duel against Mataza. On this mission, you can farm the smithing text for his armor smithing text for his weapon, and two unique skills from him. Taking a look at these bad boys, first up we have Triple Threat. This is a series of three separate thrusting attacks with a key pulse after each. It does benefit from the bonus of key pulsing, so you get to ramp up the attack on every single one of those. And when you combine this with a couple things we're going to talk about later, you get some devastating thrusts, like we're talking 1500 plus damage thrusts. We also have Bracing Breeze. This is an incredibly flashy counter where you essentially deflect the enemy, flip up into the air, spin your spear around, and come slamming down on their face. Both of these are farmable off of our boy, Toshi. Now, you can actually farm his set a little bit earlier. However, this is the mission I would recommend farming it on because it's a dual mission. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. When you beat it, you're right back at the menu. You jump back in. And I'll talk about the other mission, but the benefit of this is as you keep farming them, you're going to keep pulling in Emrita. I mean, in New Game Plus, I did the majority of my farming here, and every kill on him net me roughly a million Emrita. So keep that in mind. Now, as for farming the Tiger set, you're going to want to do that in the Cherry Blossom viewing in Daigo. In this mission, you're supposed to fight past the seven spears of Shigugitaki. And the last spear, this is the guy that is immediately after the final shrine before you make your way up to fight Hideyoshi. He can drop both the smithing text for the set in addition to the pieces. Now, I actually wouldn't suggest farming up the entire smithing text. All I did was fight him. I managed to get him to drop a waste, and on the same drop, he also dropped the spear. Uh, he has a spear or a katana. Either of them will work. The point is, we want either the Dodanuki Masakuni or the Tiger of Higo spear to supplement one of the armor pieces to get that three piece boost to piercing rain. Now, moving on from there, we're hopping on over to Twilight. Now, this is actually the earliest time that you can start farming him, and Ruin draws near halfway through this mission. You have to fight against Mataza. You can fight him here, and you can farm pieces of his armor, and you can farm for the smithing text, but once again, I would highly suggest doing it in the dual mission, because doing this, you're going to be doing the reset method. And doing the reset method in new game, for starters, you're going to have less of a chance for loot to drop. And secondly, you're not going to be getting any Amrita or gold or anything because you're resetting your game every time. 
Moving on down, one more thing to take a look at. Over here in the Dawn region, we have the submission of Abduction. Now, right at the start of Abduction, there are going to be two Gaki and a baby one-eyed Oni. If you kill them, there's a corpse. It's like right immediately at the start. You loot that corpse and an accessory will pop out. If it doesn't say Toshi's Abacus, rest at the shrine, kill those three again, hit the corpse a second time. If it still doesn't say Toshi's Abacus, go ahead and pop your Divine Branch Fragment, come back here, jump back into the mission. This is the same exact approach you would use to farm a Yashi or a Yasukani Magatama. Uh, essentially, that corpse can be looted twice in a row without picking it up, and every single time you loot it, it will drop out an accessory. Alternatively to that, there is a mission that'll give you a low level version of this that could help you get by. But at the end of the day, once you get up to a high level, you're not gonna want like a level 50 something blue Toshi's Abacus. You're gonna want something that's you know 160, ideally purple or uh, divine. So now that we've covered all that, let's jump on into the stats. Now, as for the spear itself, final blow damage is a standard of spear. You're gonna do a lot of final blow damage and it's very easy to knock enemies on down and get it. Attack bonus constitution, a no-brainer here. That is our primary stat. In a similar order, uh, we're also going to be remodeling this weapon to take all of our scaling into constitution. Life drain on melee attack just helps keep you alive a little bit. And then you're going to want a bonus for high stance, whether it's high attack key consumption, high attack break. You're going to want something related to high stance because we're going to be spending a lot of time in it. As for the secondary, doesn't matter, just here for the set bonus. As for the ranged, doesn't matter, just here to get set bonuses. I'm still running the Warrior of the West for life and then this to boost the bow damage on it. Moving on down. Now it doesn't matter what order you have these in, but you need to have at least one piece of Tiger of Higo and then your other four pieces are gonna be Mataza. Uh, beyond that, Ninjutsu power is good to look for. I like elemental damage taken while guarding. As you can see, I have more elemental damage taken there. Uh, faster winded recovery is a nice one. Now in the gloves, I would suggest getting attack and then twisting spear damage. There's a couple different things to choose from, but Twisting Spear is a really solid one. It's it's a very potent ability, fully charged up. I've seen it hit for uh, around 5,500 when we're all buffed up. So, you know, we're, we're hitting like a truck with this thing and it has an excellent kind of uh, forward momentum on it as well. So it's a solid ability to boost, but if there's a different Spear ability you really like, just go ahead and keep rolling for that. Moving on to our Yasakani. Um, really just kind of standard stuff here. We're going for life key. I like having proficiency bonus to help get all those spear skills unlocked faster. And then of course, you're going to need a Toshi's Abacus. And the reason for this is if we don't have Toshi's Abacus, then you know we can't run six pieces and get that delicious seven piece bonus. Now, moving on into our equipment, we're gonna have quite a fair amount of ninjutsu in this build. So you can comfortably slot in two quick change scrolls. As for Omyo, four barrier talismans and two extraction talismans. Extraction talismans are gonna have some synergy with our guardian spirit and it's gonna allow us to hit really, really hard on boss fights. As I mentioned, because we have so much ninjutsu, we're also going to be working in some shurikens, obviously kunai, storm kunai, and shuriken. Uh, we're not gonna be using these for everything, but anytime there's a small enemy or your health slow or something's just pissing you off and you wanna get rid of it, toss these on out. They're gonna deal a fair amount of damage. I also like having a couple fire along just to kill those slimes that we see. Moving on to the Guardian Spirit. Tengen Kujaku. Now Tengen may seem like a weird choice at first, but the reason we are running Tengen with this build is because of the stance based and Rita bonus. Tengen will give you a different bonus based on what stance you're in when you absorb Emrita, and in particular, when you are in high stance, we get an increase to attack and a significant increase to attack at that. Because the majority of this build is going to take place in high stance, this is going to be one of the biggest boosts we can get. Uh, beyond that, the rest of the stuff we're not really all that worried about. We're basically running Tengen just for that stance based bonus because we're in high stance so much of the time with this build. But we do have an anima bonus and elemental attack, which we're going to combo that with a Oni B core to help get some elemental damage up on our weapon constantly. Uh, obviously having enemy treasure and Rita Kodama sensor is also just a nice little perk to have. You always know where everything's at on the battlefield. And then the anima bonus on ranged hit will also synergize with all the shurikens we're doing. So that'll be a nice little, little uh, you know, extra bonus. Uh, moving on down, Magatsu Warrior, this is giving us a 2% increase to active skill damage and it's giving us anima charge based off cumulative damage. This is gonna help to offset the fact that this is mainly an anima bonus based on ranged hit. So we're getting more anima, anima based off the damage we're doing in addition to the skill bonus. Shooting Doji, 
this is just more synergy on the fact that we are looking to absorb Emrita. We're basically going to absorb Emrita, get an increase to defense. We're going to get an increase to attack. So just kind of nice little bit of both worlds there. And then the Thunderstorm Oni B core is just so I can have lightning on demand. When it comes to having three cores on, since we're running both a Magatsu and a Shuten, and these both have relatively high attunement costs, there's not really much you can put in this final slot. And so when it came down to deciding what I wanted, a Thunderstorm, this one in particular, I have a, a high amount of Yokai ability damage on it. Obviously, that elemental damage has some synergy there with Tengen. And so it's just going to be nice to work in, plus the fact that having Thunder will allow me to slow down enemies. Moving on to our secondary guardian spirit here. All the way back at the start, we have Shinroku. Now the main reason for Shinroku is we're getting the life drain on strong attack. Uh, as I mentioned, we're gonna be doing quite a bit of strong attacks. In your mid stance, your strong attack is a thrust where it's forward, back, forward. In your high stance, your strong attack is a thrust. So we're just looking to pull in a little bit of heal off of both of those. Alternatively, you could also run Mikami just to get more final blow damage. Either of these is a good choice, but because quite a few thrust attacks are strong attacks, I figured Shinroku made a lot of sense. Moving on into our skills. Now let's talk about the spear skills. Now, first up, I will say fluidity is an amazing move for spear. Absolutely amazing. Uh, spear flourish is one of the best abilities in the game. Basically, while we're in, in a high stance, every time we key pulse, we're going to do this little spear twirl, and it's going to flip on back. It's going to hit the enemy in the face, knock them back, do some damage. And this allows you to apply that to just about any stance. You can do it you know, high, medium, low. But the fact is, we're going to be in high stance the majority of the time. And since we're focused on thrust attacks, stability is going to be the clear winner here. This is just going to boost our thrust attacks even further and extend the range on them. Along those lines, first rule, second rule, and third rule of thrusting maximize that thrust damage as much as possible moving on down you don't need to put points in your special skills once you unlock them but let's talk about our other two thrusts piercing rain this is going to allow us to follow up with a series of thrust attacks now if you're early on in the game and you're not at this build yet instead i would suggest running spearfall this build will basically flatten the enemy down if they don't block, allowing you to get a easy final blow. Late game, however, with a set like this, Piercing Rain is going to do a lot of damage. So that is why we are running that over Spearfall. Uh, moving on over here, Twisting Spear. We basically charge this baby on up, dash forward and stab. This will mess enemies up, especially if you can time it right and get it on off. Uh, over here, Chidori, this is going to be our mid-stance move. We also get some thrust damage on that. It's an out-of-key uh, out finisher that we can use. We also have Resounding Lunge here. This is another move that's just going to allow us to kind of follow on up and strike enemies. Uh, Spear Shove for low stance. Rising Dragon just to get back up is a very, very solid move. Rainbow Ruse for some mobility. Flying Monkey comboed with Flying Monkey 2. This is great for hitting Yokai. You flip on above them, come down, stab them, break the horn usually. Uh, pole kick, a anti key move in low stance, and then wild spear because you know I didn't feel like leaving the one command empty. Uh, over in the mid stance, we do have water wheel. This is actually a pretty good move for destroying key, and I do like to mix things up. Uh, and then of course we have twirl to knock the enemy on down and twirl two. Now the reason we have twirl while we also have bracing breeze is while bracing breeze is super fun to use and it's flashy a lot of boss tier enemies won't fall for it any weak tier enemies you'll decimate with this but a lot of bosses will block immediately when they see it coming and if that's the case twirl is going to be a better choice since we're going to drop them down and we can get an instant final blow so this also means that l1 with either square or triangle will allow you to get off your parry and mid stance so there's no confusion about which one is which Ooh, a lot of stuff to cover there uh, moving on into skill customization triple threat we're going to be giving our constitution boost i want to make this as strong as possible um if i'm being honest i should probably put it on piercing rain but i really like using triple threat which is why i have it on there uh twisting spear i'm gonna have this give me an anima gain because it's a nice move to finish off opponents with spear flourish i should actually probably put something on let's see what would be a good thing to have a spear pro flourish here Probably that. Probably extra key coming on it every time I spear flourish. Uh, down in the low stance, I think spear shove is a good candidate for masterful slice. That's just going to allow even more key damage. Actually, you know what? I spear flourish so much. Let me put masterful slice on there. That makes a little bit more sense. See, look at this. It's an ever evolving process. You know, there's no point doing stuff in low stance. Uh, moving on to our stats. Now, constitution is the primary stat for spear. This also means you're going to have a buttload of life. As you can see, I'm at 4638. 
Uh, beyond that, magic up to nine for your Yasakani. Dexterity is going to be your secondary dump stat. After you max out constitution, we're going to put everything extra in dex to make those kunai even stronger. Skill is up to 15 and strength up to 20 to meet stat requirements for gear pieces and for guardian spirit. Uh, stamina we leave at the base of five. Courage goes up to nine for Yasakani. Heart will go up to 30 to meet stat requirements on our guardian spirit. Uh, having covered that, as for the, the uh, clan, as you guys know, when it comes down to clans, I always suggest Gamo. Gamo gives you a bonus based on consecutive attacks, and in addition to that, it gives you a hefty chunk of luck, which, let's be honest, this game is about farming. So, to show on off this build, it looks like our buddy Honda's actually in some trouble. We're going to go help him out. Big old thick boy can't take care of things on his own. Needs to turn to the speedy spear boy build to get things done. It's ironic, isn't it? After all the people that had to rely on and use that set, now we're out here saving them. This guy. Wow! The few moves I like using that's not a high stance one. fast for you. Yeah, that was one combo right there. That <laughs> just, just that was one one combo with piercing rain. Killed that guy. Absolutely ridiculously strong ability. In the right hands. Looks like you're in trouble, old man. Boom! Boom! Keep in mind, that Spear Flourish, every time we attack, that's doing damage. So that's going to allow us to basically just, you know, slide on in, do a Spear Flourish, take it from there. That was a basic attack for 2,500 damage.
had to flip off the head at the end there. Now while that last clip was focused on fighting through a bunch of yokai, let's show you how this fares against the new game plus humanoid opponent. Because let's be honest, that's going to be the end game is farming these guys for texts. So first, we're going to fight everyone's favorite bird brain. What about New Game Plus Nobunaga? You know, Demon King. He's got all of his crazy abilities and whatnot. He'll definitely be more of a challenge, right? Also flopped. <laughs> so before we wrap up, the one thing I want to talk about is our special skill. So to get this off, you have to hit triangle right as the key bar is about to fill up. It's a tight timing. It's exactly like you would do a key pulse. When you execute it, man, it looks good. And the last thing I want to touch on is early game builds. Now, obviously, you can't really do this early game. It's simply not possible. Uh, if you are going to go for the Warrior of the East or you do want to stay with the Warrior of the East as a Thick Boy build, I do want to point out some other spears you could work into the build similar to this. Uh, if you're doing Warrior of the East, you could run Japan's Bravest, run a Sakon Spear along with the helmet to take the Tornado Damage boost, or alternatively, you could slot in a Red Demon Spear and pick up a Spearfall boost. Both of those being decent alternatives to just going, you know, your plain old basic Honda build. So either way, guys, that's going to wrap this one on up. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And up next, I will see you guys with the Hatchets build.